Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am delighted to have Denise Duffield Thomas, the creator of Lucky Bitch Bootcamp, here with me. Um, now, Lucky Bitch Bootcamp has been the single best investment I made in myself and my business, and is definitely behind a lot of my success over the last year. So it's an absolute honor for me to have her here and ask her a few questions. So welcome, Denise. Thank you, Gemma. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, that's really lovely to hear. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I'm sure, obviously, it's all your work, but I'm happy to have contributed to it. Wow. <laughs> no, the, the framework that you teach in boot camp has just been perfect for me. And it just works. It just absolutely works. Um, so for people that don't know you yet, um, could you sort of talk through a little bit more about Lucky Bitch Boot Camp and what it is and what it means and so on? Absolutely. So I am a money mindset mentor. But basically, I started out as a business coach and um, back in my corporate career when I lived in London, I was a consultant. And I realized that when I started doing the one-to-one -one coaching work, people were so stuck on the most, to me, obvious things. You know, I would give them homework to do to go and work on their business and they wouldn't do it. And I was like, what? what's going on? And what I realized was that the mindset piece was really stopping most entrepreneurs from getting ahead. because they were smart, ambitious. You know, if you've had a job, you know how to follow a project plan, you know how to tick off a to-do list, but there was just something there. And it's, it made me realize that mindset is way more important than strategy. And when it came to money, especially women um, sabotage themselves around money. They feel guilty about charging people. They feel guilty about increasing their prices. There's all this story and self-belief and mindset stuff that goes around money. So I decided that I was going to specialize in that and I created a group program instead of just teaching my clients one to one to one to one. Um, I decided to create a group program, write a book about it and, um, and we've run the program now since 2012. So we've had almost 3000 women go through that program now and it's, um, it's been amazing. It's been great to be able to contribute um, to changing the conversation for women and money. Yeah, yeah, and it's huge. I mean, it's a huge message. Um, and I think a lot of women don't even realize that that's going on for them. Um, and I absolutely agree with what you say about mindset. I mean, obviously, I work, I'm an online business consultant, and that's the biggest thing that, that I've seen that makes um, people fail is the mindset piece. And you can have the best skill in the world, and you can have the best experience in the world, but if you haven't got the right mindset, that's just going to stop you in your tracks. And I think, I think for me as well, that's, that's the main thing that I became aware of my blocks through boot camp. And I didn't, I wasn't even aware of them. I didn't even know they were going on. Um, and boot camp helped me to kind of identify those and then work on them. And that's kind of cleared the path for me to, to do so many different things, which has been amazing. Um, mm. So one of the things with that, because that's a really important point, I think, how do you think people can recognize that they've got those blocks in themselves? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think a lot of people come from the world of personal development or self-help where you're not really supposed to even acknowledge that you might have blocks mm. because sometimes it's all about surface kind of rah, rah, Pollyanna type thinking where you have to just be really positive all the time. And, and the problem with that, it just does not go beneath the surface to figure out why you might be sabotaging yourself. And if it was just about, you know, motivation and um, you know, positive thinking, then everyone would have a lot more money probably, you know, so what, what I say to people is how do you know if you've got a money block? Well, if you've been stuck charging people, if you've been stuck at an income level for a while, if you've hit an income plateau, you're not sure how to go beyond it. Well, chances are you've, you've got a money block and guess what? Everybody I know has money blocks. Even, um, some of my most successful friends who have got, you know, seven figure, multi seven figure businesses, and I have a seven figure business. I have money blocks and I work on them all of the time. So chances are you do. It's just, I think it sabotages you at different points, maybe in, in different ways. So sometimes you might be able to, you know, get on, just create great things in your business for, through sheer willpower. But at some point you're probably going to go back and sabotage yourself at some, you know, with, with your old blocks. Yeah, totally. And actually, one of the things that um, that really kind of um, appeared to me in boot camp was actually it's not just money blocks; it's any kind of block. And I've used um, the the framework and the, and the different methods that you teach in boot camp to work on other blocks. I had a massive block around the fear of visibility and basically just mm. not feeling enough. And 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 I used those methods to really help me blast that. And it's it's 
done so much good for me and my self-confidence and my belief in what I'm doing. Um, do you use those methods for um, other blocks for you as well, outside of kind of money blocks and so on? Yeah, you can. And you can actually use the, a lot of the methods I teach to manifest anything, really. Mm -hmm. You just have a different lens through it. So very early on, um, after I'd created the Money Boot Camp and I'd written my book, Get Rich Lucky Bitch, I was actually going to create a soulmate course because so many of my clients were saying, great, you've helped me with the money. Now I want to find a partner. So I was like, well, this stuff works for soulmates as well. And um, so I created a soulmate course, which I think, you know, 10 people went through or something. It was very early on. And then I wrote a book, Get Hitched, Lucky Bitch, <laughs> about manifesting a soulmate. <laughs> I wish I was joking. And, <laughs> Love it. Uh, <laughs> and it was finished, right? And I killed it because I realized, yes, you can use these methods for, for everything. I could have written a book, Get Fit, Lucky Bitch. Yeah. You know, it could have. It really works on anything. But I realized that for me, I wanted just to work on the money piece and I wanted to go deep into the, into the money piece. So over the last couple of years, since we ran the first boot camp in 2012, the material has gotten richer in lots of ways. It's gotten deeper and richer because I haven't, you know, diluted the message and gone to other things. But anytime someone in the boot camp says, oh, can I use this on, you know, whatever, I go, yep, just go through the boot camp, pretend I'm saying what it is that you want to manifest. And there's slight, yeah. you know, slight, slight little changes and differences. Um, but it's really a muscle of asking for what you want and being okay receiving it. It's, and that is a muscle. And it doesn't matter what you're trying to manifest. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, um, and I've done that. And, and I don't think boot camp is just like a one-off process that you go through and then you're fixed at the end of it. <coughs> I think it's like right. an ongoing thing that you have to keep working on and you can just sort of pick it up and put it down depending on your needs and what are the blocks that, that you kind of, you, you find. And um, are there any certain elements of boot camp that you practice regularly? Because I, I, there's certain things that I have to do um, and I do them quite a lot. So for things like um, writing down the gratitude, tapping mm. is massive for me. It really, really works for me. But are there any sort of particular elements um, in your framework that you use regularly to help you? I do tapping every day as well, mm. actually. And um, we do it as a family before we go to bed. So my daughter, Willow, is two and a half. And she's been doing tapping since she was, I don't know, maybe a year or something. I mean, we've I always done it with her. Her tapping is so cute. Well, I need to do an, a new one because now she says it. Because now she obviously yeah. is yeah. a bit older. And we've said to her, and if for those of you don't, who don't know tapping, it's emotional freedom technique. It's a way of releasing blocks and fears and phobias and all sorts of things. But we say to her, we do a couple of rounds and we just say, I deeply and completely love and accept myself as we do it. And then we say, do you want to tap on anything else? And sometimes she says, no, I'm finished. But sometimes she'll say something like, even though I hit George today. <laughs> I think I love it. And it's so cute. It's just things that have been on her mind. But so EFT is a big one for me. Forgiveness work is a big one. And, um, and I think just being in that, con that mindset that there's always going to be a solution. Whenever you're stuck with somewhere, there's always going to be a solution and a story that you need to go back to. It's not the universe doesn't like you or it's not meant to be. You always have to go back to the beginning and see what you can clear and declutter and then you can move on. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much back there, isn't there, that you can kind of, you can pick up and, and work on. Um, I'm going to pick up on your story um, of Willow because I think that's lovely. Um, obviously, a lot of your stuff is around money memories and stuff that have happened in our past and kind of clearing those. As a mum, what else do you do to, to create that kind of positive money memories for your kids? I mean, I've got a three-year-old son so that's really important to me yeah well actually this was so important that we put in um, a whole new module around this in the boot camp about how to talk to your kids about money mm. and um, because as soon as I had Willow I realized even though I'd been working on my money mindset for such a long time and and been working on the way I spoke about money when I had um, kids suddenly all these old things came up that I didn't even realize were, were part of my um, vocabulary like for example don't touch money it's dirty you know we've heard that yeah. so many yeah, times yeah, yeah, yeah. and the first time I said it because we you know we have coins in bowls around the house and so we let her play with money and she was putting it in her mouth we're like don't put it in your mouth and then I went oh wow we can't say that so we just yeah. say we don't we don't put money in our mouth we take care of our money 
And so it doesn't have the emotional charge around it that money is a dirty thing. It's just more like we don't put that in our mouth. Like I would say to her, we don't put crystals in our mouth or we don't put, you know, something else in our mouth. Mm. So it's just trying to make that really neutral kind of language. Um, things like, um, oh, I spoke about this today on in another interview, you know, when you go to kids' birthday parties and you blow out the candles and they say, make a wish, but don't tell anyone, it won't come yeah. true. Yeah. I only realized that once we started going to kids' parties and I went, wow, that's, so we yeah. always say in our family, we pretend to do birthday and we say, make a wish and tell everyone your wish so it can come true. Like little things like that, we really try and look at changing our language. And um, we do this other fun thing about parking fairies, which my friend Beck Gibson taught me. She always gets the best parking spots. And she says, I just ask the parking fairies. So now when we're driving somewhere, we say, let's ask the parking fairies for the best parking spot. And so kids are naturally good manifestors anyway. And I think you just have to make sure you encourage that. And don't say some of the things that we maybe have heard and learned as kids, like, money doesn't grow on trees and you don't get something for nothing and just all those things. So you just have to watch yourself and you don't have to be perfect. They're going to have, you know, their own money stuff that comes up. So we don't have to worry about that. The best thing we can do is just, you know, work on ourselves, be good role models and just try and just get rid of some of that negative stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think it's really important what you were saying there about the birthday parties because yeah, I do that as well. And I hadn't even realized I was doing that or saying that, but that's such an important message, isn't it? It is. And you might've seen this in the boot camp too, in, um, you know, some of the, I think it's week two lessons, you start to look at goal setting and there are people who then post in the boot camp and they say, I've just set goals. And now, you know, all this stuff, bad stuff is happening. It was much better when I never set goals ever, you know, ever. And I never tracked my money. And I just go, no, that's not true. That's just an old story that you've got that it's unsafe for you to talk about your goals or share them with other people because it's not going to come true if you share it. And that is just something that's been ingrained in us from such a young age. Um, And, you know, we do a weekly goal setting thread in the boot camp. And, you know, that triggers people as well because they're unused to sharing what they want and they're almost scared to say it out loud. And I always say to people, Goal setting's free. You know, you may as well ask. It's totally free. Um, and actually, the funny thing is, I don't know if you've noticed this, but because every week we have that goal setting. Yeah, 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 we do. And yeah, and once a month, there's one that says, write it down on a piece of paper and take a picture of it. And that is always the shortest thread of the yeah, week. Yeah, I've noticed that. goes on that. forever. Yeah. Because people are scared to commit it to paper. Yeah. It feels too real. And it feels like almost like, oh my God, if I write it down on paper, what if it doesn't come true? It's like, oh my God, well, you, the paper was probably essentially free as well. But yeah. it just triggers all that stuff in us from, from such, such a young age that it wasn't safe for us to ask for what we want. Yeah, absolutely. And I love how you ask people to be really, really specific when they're writing those down. Um, because yeah. I, think, I think people find that really difficult as well. Um, the next question I'd love to ask you actually follows on nicely with that around um, the law of attracting and manifesting because that's obviously a major, major part of your program. And there are lots of other aspects around um, money memories and so on. And one thing that I didn't realize is I'd actually been manifesting things for years, um, but I didn't realize that's what I was doing. I think I was just thought, oh, well, that's lucky or that's a coincidence. Um, yeah. And once I started boot camp, I was like, oh, this is what I'm doing. Oh, this is amazing. I can just hook into this and do more of this stuff. And it's, and it's, it's huge for me and it's a big part of my life. And boot camp has helped me believe in that and believe that that you can do that for pretty much anything um so yeah. it's a massive part of boot camp for me and what i've learned how important do you think that aspect of boot camp is um to, to people and why well because you have to be able to learn a process to make real and that's for me that's my definition of manifesting for me, I always just think make real. How can we make this real? Yeah. Which means how can you make it as practical as possible for you to break down those steps of manifesting? And where people have gotten stuck in the past is that they focus too much on the wishing part of it. You know, the wishing, the desiring, all that kind of stuff. And that's that's one part of it. But there's also stuff around um, getting very clear on what you want, decluttering beliefs about why you can't have it, at taking action and not just 
um, action like, oh, I wrote down my goals. That's, that's part of asking for what you want and getting clear. That's not an action. That's not an actual practical action. And, uh, and then learning to receive. And it's, mm. you know, there's five steps in that that I teach. And uh, maybe you can link to my pre-manifesting course as well. Yeah, yeah, course. well, definitely, definitely. Because I break that down. And what a lot of people do, they usually put their time disproportionately in one area. So some people only do the action and they're like trying to just break through on willpower. I'll just do more stuff. I'll just work harder. Yeah. And that doesn't work. And then you get a lot of people who are in the kind of stage three, which is all around the inspiration and surrounding yourself with possibility and anchors and all this stuff that I talk about in the course. And a lot of people think that that's the only place they need to be. So they, you know, they love um, making dream boards and doing all this cool mm. stuff, which again is really important, but you can't spend your time disproportionately yeah. in that one space. So um, it, I think it is important to follow a process and it's very empowering when you know, okay, cool. It's not again that the universe doesn't like me. I've just missed out a very crucial part of this. Yeah. And um, you know, and I, I'm very practical, but I also do believe that when you put those things into practice, the universe kind of meets you halfway and that's when those synchronicities and things do start yeah. to happen. But if you kind of just sit there and wait for them to happen, they don't, you have to meet, meet it halfway. Yeah, totally. I, yeah, I really believe in that. You've got to, you've got to put the work in as well to, for it yep. to actually happen. Um, yeah. Okay, the other thing that I would love to speak to you about, because obviously, you know, boot camp is amazing um, and you are an amazing businesswoman. You have an amazing business and, and, and great success with your business, um, which dovetails really nicely into what I do because I'm an online business consultant and I work very much with small business owners and entrepreneurs. So I would love to understand a little bit more about the business side of you. Um, mm. So what has been the single most important thing that's affected your business growth, do you think? Yeah, um, definitely consistency. Mm. You know, I've never been, um, gosh, I've never been, you know, like had the best branding or I've never been the most organized. I've definitely never been the smartest or the most creative in my business. But I have to say something I can hand, hand on heart say I've been very, very consistent. Mm. So um, I've worked full time in, you know, this kind of lucky bitch business for six years but even before that, I've had blogs for another kind of maybe three years before that. So it's almost for nine years, I've blogged every single week without fail. And that doesn't just happen. That is just a mindset of consistency that no matter what, and that's not waiting for the inspiration to strike. You know, there's been many weeks where I was like, what the crap am I going to write about this week on my blog? Yeah, yeah. But the fact that I've made that commitment that it's going to happen, I've had to come up with the ideas. And sometimes the ones that I've really pushed and gone, oh, this is crap, but it's something, have been the ones that people have resonated with the yeah. most. Go figure, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that consistency, it's built my newsletter list. I think we're um, just under 60,000 on the newsletter list at the wow. moment, about 58,000. So it's, that's where it's built, been built from. We've only really dabbled in Facebook ads in the last year. Um, but it's just been showing up every single week, giving to my audience and, and having those, you know, freebies for people to sign up to like free audios and stuff yeah. like that. Not just giving, but Hey, join my newsletter list. Um, yeah, I think that's it because nothing else I've really done that spectacularly, to be honest. It's just showing up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I see that in you. Um, and you do, you show up every single day and you're, you're kind of doing your thing. And consistency is so important. Um, and one of the things that I see actually killing consistency is, is perfectionism, which is something that I suffer a little bit from. And then you kind of, you can try to be too perfect, but actually just, just get it out there and see what people think of it. And I think that's a, a really important message um, for small business owners. Um, yeah, absolutely. If you could give one piece of advice to someone starting up a business right now for the first time, what would it be? Um, just, just start, you know, um, start a very simple website and just start writing or blogging or doing videos on a topic that you're passionate about. Mm. And just, you know, do your apprenticeship which means show up and give and learn and don't get discouraged. Um, everyone's first webinar has nobody on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone starts with zero people on their newsletter list. And what separates people um, who quit versus who are successful is not ambition and talent and creativity or any of that stuff. I really think it's just showing up and not quitting. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great bit of advice. Um, and as my focus is on sort of online and online marketing and so on, what for your business, what is um, your best online marketing tips? What's really working well for you? Oh, good question. Um, again, I would love to say that I've done lots of sexy new things. <laughs> but um, it's just, it's really simple and obvious, but it's just making offers. And that's what I've been really good at is um, I've got a lot of free audios and, and free little things. And at the end of it, I just say, and if you want to join my boot camp, you know, it's very low key. Um, and my boot camp, I mean, it's open all the time, um, except for a special thing we're doing next month. But yeah. it's, um, yeah, I've just sort of, at the end of all my freebies, I've just gone, hey, join the boot camp if yeah. you want. <laughs> and people do, you know, and I think that's, for me, I was always like, oh, this, this opt-in is just a placeholder until I do something really professional and, and nice. And I never have, yeah. you know, it's great information, but it's not perfect. But in that time I've, I've, um, you know, helped a, a lot of people and made good money just from making those simple offers. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I love that, that anyone can do that. You know, there isn't a barrier to entry with that. You don't need a big no. budget to be able to do that. You just make this stuff and make it available. And I think that's available to anyone that's, that's got a business. So that's a really nice tip for people. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's the biggest mistake that you've made in your business? Um, it just, I think it's just trying things um, uh, out of a sense of creativity or shiny ob object syndrome. I yeah, think yeah. shiny object syndrome. Like things like doing the Soulmate course and Soulmate book, that cost me probably about $5,000 to yeah. put that together and then I scrapped it. Um, making an app which people love. I know people love my app. But again, it was just kind of going outside my zone of genius a little bit. Yeah. Um, so just little things like that and not, maybe not being discerning about some of the courses I I'd, I'd, um, have joined. You know, I'm kind of like I'm very susceptible to NLP. So I was like, yeah. everyone else is joining. Maybe I should join too. And, um, you know, but I, I, I think what's been successful for my business is seeing those things not as mistakes but are just as rites of passage. Yeah. You know, yeah, I've been very good at that. Yeah, I do. I, I don't see mistakes. I just see learning opportunities. Um, so I, I, yeah. I absolutely agree with you there. And there's really, really nice experiences to, to share. I really suffer from the shiny object syndrome as well. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, I do this thing. And it's like totally off course and doesn't fit with my strategy. So yeah, I, uh, I sympathize. Um, oh, I, no, I was going to say one more thing. Yeah, it's making yeah. those, I made a whole bunch of branded um, things just for fun last year. Like, and stuff that I was never going to sell, but I kind of did it for fun. And that was really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a branded swimsuit and caftans and oh, just I random. I love crap. those. Though. I've seen you in those. They look really <laughs> <laughs> A mesh uh, tank top. Oh my God. Just really random stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to wrap up now, but one last thing I would love you to talk to people about live boot camp. I'm going to be doing it. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm going to put all of your links, um, uh, in the post with this video. So we'll have the, the free, um, manifesting course and all of the stuff there, but I'd love you to talk about yeah. boot camp and why you think that would be, um, really powerful for people. Absolutely. So um, we haven't done a live round of bootcamp since 2012. So that means we're going to be doing live calls, um, 3,000 women doing it all at the same time, going through the course together. So the momentum of that is going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get together on those calls, we're going to um, you know, do group clearing and group meditations and talk through the materials together. So I was saying to someone today, it's the difference between listen to you, Beyonce at home and being at a concert with yeah. thousands of other people. Not, I'm not saying I'm Beyonce. But <laughs> it's just, I, I just mean the experience is, is very different when you get yeah. to do it. And we're not going to be doing this again for a while. I have no idea if we'll do it again. I don't know when, but um, so for people who want to jump on that, it is perfect timing to do it. It's perfect timing now because a lot of people are kind of, I think it's struggling with their mindset a little bit right now. I really feel it coming from the entrepreneurial space. Yeah. So if you've been wanting to work on your money blocks or you've been wanting to make more money or you know that you are stuck at a plateau or even if you've known about the boot camp for a while and you've been looking for an excuse, well, kind of now is the perfect time. And um, if you join by the 27th, 27th of October, 
9 p.m. Eastern States time, um, there's an early bird rate on that as well. And then we start the live calls the following week. And I know, Gemma, um, you have a, a, a link for this? Yes, I do. I have a link to that. And actually, I have a, a really nice bonus that I think is going to work with this. So if people um, do buy boot camp using my link, and I'll put all of that in the post, um, they actually get a free annual membership to my Simply Smart Business Academy, which is my membership site, which basically teaches you everything that you need to know to um, start, grow, and manage uh, a business online. And the, the the value of that is about I think four four six dollars um, a year. And for people that buy boot camp, they will get a year's membership for free. Um, so I'll put all of this, I know I'm so excited. I'll put all the links of that in the post. Um, but for now, thank you so much, Denise. It was wonderful to meet you and chat to you thank you and thank you everyone and we hope to see you in the boot camp